In this video, we're going to take a look at more examples that use the derivative rules. So in this first example, we're going to find dy dx, which is Leibniz's um, way of writing the derivative, and evaluate this derivative at x equals 1. So we have this function here, which is actually a product, but in the first piece of the product is also the quotient. So to find dy dx, we're going to use the product rule. And the product rule states that we first take the derivative of the first piece. Now remember that that first piece is actually a quotient. So the first derivative of the first piece, so we need to find the derivative of our numerator, which will be 3. And then we're going to multiply that by the denominator, which is x. Then we subtract. And we take our numerator, which is 3x plus 2. And then we're going to multiply it by the derivative of our denominator. In this case, it's going to be 1. All of this will be divided by x squared. Now, remember, this is only the derivative of the first part. Okay. Then we're going to multiply by the second part, which is our g of x, so you can call it. But we don't change it. So this will be x to the negative 5 plus 1. Okay, plus we're going to take our first part of the function and we leave it. And now we're going to take the derivative of the second piece. So that will be negative 5 x to the negative 6. So we bring down the negative 5 to the front using our power rule. Subtract 1 from the exponent. And the derivative of 1 is 0. And so that's it. Now, what we might want to do is just a little bit of simplification. So I just want to simplify our numerator here. So we have 3x, and I actually have a minus 3x, so that's going to become 0. And then I have the negative 2. And this is times by 1, so we can ignore that part. So we have negative 2 over x squared. And then I have x to the negative fifth plus 1. Um, over here, what might be nice is just to uh, move this x to the negative 6 to the denominator so that we don't have this negative exponent. Okay. So I have plus negative 5 and then 3x plus 2. And when I move x to the negative 6 to the bottom, joining it with this one that has a 1 already, I have x to the 7. I don't have to simplify anymore because what my whole goal is is actually to evaluate when x equals 1. So I have dy dx, and I'm going to plug in 1 and 2x. So I have negative 2 over 1 squared, 1 to the negative fifth plus 1, plus negative 5 over 3 times 1 plus 2, all divided by 1 to the 7. So this is just 1, so that we can ignore that. 1 to the negative 5th is 1. 1 plus 1 is 2. Okay, so negative 2 times 2, which is negative 4, plus 1 to the 7, we can ignore that. 3 times 1 plus 2 is going to be 5, and then 5 times negative 5 is negative 25. Add it with a negative 4, and we get negative 29. And I'm going to put a little mark so that it says that we evaluated this derivative of x equals 1. Okay, let's take a look at another example. So find all values of x at which the tangent line to this curve is going to be horizontal. So the tangent line, remember, we need to find the derivative because that's our slope. So we have y prime. And I'm using y prime this time because our initial function was y. This is a quotient, so we're going to find the derivative of our numerator, which is 2x plus 0 times the denominator. And then we're going to subtract our numerator, so x squared plus 1, don't change it. And then times the derivative of our denominator, which will be 1, and then minus 0. So we don't have to write anything down. All of that will be divided by x minus 1 to the power of 2. So let's simplify this one a little bit just to see what it looks like. Maybe it might make it a little nicer. So we distribute. We get 2x squared minus 2x minus x squared minus 1. 
And one more time, 2x squared minus x squared is x squared minus 2x minus 1, all over x minus 1, all squared. Okay, so what does it mean? Um, let's reread the question. It says, find all values of x at which the tangent line to this curve is horizontal. So if the tangent line is horizontal, that means... that our slope must equal zero. And we know what the slope is. The slope is y prime. So we can say now that zero is equal to our slope, which is x squared minus 2x minus 1, all divided by x minus 1 squared. Okay, and to get rid of a denominator, we're going to multiply both sides by x minus 1 squared. So that actually, that disappears. So I get 0 equals x squared minus 2x minus 1. This is not factorable. And what I'm trying to do, remember, is to find x. So I'm going to plug it into the quadratic formula. So x equals negative b, so it's negative negative 2, plus or minus square root negative 2 squared minus 4 times 1 times negative 1 all divided by 2 times 1. So we simplify a radical and we get 4 and then plus another 4. So we get square root of 8 all divided by 2. And square root of 8, we can reduce that to root 4 root 2, which becomes 2 root 2, all divided by 2. And one more step, because all of these numbers are divisible by 2, we can divide them all by 2. Now we don't divide, remember, the radical number by 2 because it's inside the radical. So it's only the coefficients and the numbers, the constants on the outside. So we get 1 plus or minus root 2 when all of the numbers circled in red are divided by 2. And this is the x value. There's two of them actually. 1 plus root 2 and 1 minus root 2, which will give me horizontal tangents. And you can check this on the graph. So when you graph x squared plus 1 over x minus 1, you see that there are going to be two places uh, where there's going to be a horizontal tangent. All right, let's take a look at a different type of example. Um, this one's a little different because I'm giving you some information. So I'm telling you that f of 3 equals negative 2. Um, but f prime of 3, the derivative of 3, is 4. And then we want to find g prime of 3. Now to find g prime of 3, we need to first find the derivative. So let's find g prime of x. So the derivative of 3x squared is 6x and minus 5. So remember, this is a constant times the function. So it's going to be minus 5 times f of x. The derivative of f of x is f prime of x. Okay, so now let's find g prime of 3. So wherever we see x, we're going to replace it with the number 3. So 6 times 3 is 18. And 5 times, now we actually know what f prime of 3 is. So f prime of 3 is actually from here. We can plug in the number 4. So we have 18 minus 20, and that equals negative 2. All right, let's try this one, which is a division one. So again, we need to use our quotient rule. So we're going to find a derivative first. So g prime of x, derivative of the numerator is 2 times our denominator, without it changing, minus 2x plus 1, which is our numerator, times the derivative of our denominator, which is f prime of x. All of this is divided by f of x all squared. So when I find g prime of 3, I'm going to plug in the number 3 wherever I see x. Okay, and now we're going to evaluate what I can. I'm plugging in what values I can. So if 2 times f of 3, f of 3 according to my question is negative 2. So 2 times negative 2 and this part, there's no extra function, so 2 times 3 plus 1 is going to be 7. 
f prime of 3, go back here, and it says f prime of 3 is 4. So replace it with 4. And then all of this is divided by f of 3. And again, f of 3 is negative 2, all squared. So g prime of 3 is equal to negative 4 minus 28 all over 4. And we calculate that to be negative 32 divided by 4, which is negative 8. All right. And lastly, a notation for higher order derivatives. So if the derivative f prime of x is itself differentiable, then the derivative of f prime of x is denoted f double prime of x. So we draw two little dashes or slashes or primes. Um, this is called the second derivative. Now this process can be continued to obtain the third, the fourth, and higher order derivatives. So let me just show you what that notation looks like. So there's the first derivative, the second derivative, the third derivative. Now we don't obviously want to keep drawing little hash marks to show each derivative. So once it's bigger than 4, we write f, and then in brackets we will put a little number 4 in brackets. In Leibniz's notation, that would be dy dx, d squared y, dx squared, just say it's power Sorry, to find the second derivative, the third derivative would be d3y dx cubed, and d to the 4y, and dx to the 4. Now remember, this is all notation, so it doesn't mean exponents in here. Okay, so let's take a look at an example. So it says find um, f, the fourth power, or sorry, the fourth derivative of f. And this is our function here. So our first derivative, um, we can go 3 times 4, which is 12. x cubed minus 6x squared plus 2x minus 4. Notice that I'm multiplying my uh, coefficient by the exponent. And then each of the exponents decreases by 1. So 4 becomes 3, 3 becomes 2, and 2 becomes 1. Second derivative. 12 times 3 is 36. It's going to decrease, so x squared minus 12x to the power of 1, which you don't need to write down, plus 2. Okay, the third derivative is going to be 72x minus 12, and then plus 0. And then our fourth derivative is then just going to be 72. And then everything after that, if I asked you to find the fifth derivative, notice that the derivative of a constant will be 0. Okay, let's try this last one. Uh, find the sixth, third derivative and then evaluate at x equals 1. I would recommend that maybe change this to 6x to the negative 4. Okay, so then we have y prime equals negative 24x to the negative 5. Notice it's a lot quicker than using the reciprocal rule. So when you can change your expressions, your um, reciprocal expressions, to have a negative exponent, then it's easy to apply this quickly. So the negative 24 times negative 5 is 120 x to the negative 6. And then our third derivative, 120 times negative 6, is negative 720 x to the negative 7. Now, so then to find my third derivative, evaluated x equals 1, I'm going to plug 1 into my expression. So we get negative 720 and then 1 to the power of 7, which is going to have a positive exponent. So this gives me negative 720.